Hello, my friends. Throughout the agricultural regions of America, especially Texas, there exists a smoldering and persistent war. It is a war between farmers and wild boars, with no mercy and no end in sight. It is estimated that there are more than 9.3 million feral hogs in the United States. Texas is home to more than 5.7 million feral hogs, and they can be found in 99% of the state's 254 counties. Every year, wild boars cause about 1.7 billion USD in damage to agriculture and the environment. They are large and ferocious, with some weighing up to 590 pounds. Their presence in the area has deprived native species of food sources. Deer are one of the species that must leave a habitat when wild boars arrive. The pigs dug with their snouts, wallowing in the dirt, creating huge holes in the ground and tearing up crops. According to the Department of Conservation, a group of 10 pigs can destroy 13 to 25 acres in one night. And the holes created by pigs can destroy farmers' livelihoods. Not only do they invade farm fields and disturb crop production, wild boars are also vectors for many pathogens and parasites. They defecate in the fields, leaving behind fecal coliforms that can be infectious and pose serious health risks to humans and livestock. Farmers on farms in North Texas say feral hogs can cause thousands of dollars in damage every night. Many prevention methods have been implemented, but farmers still have to face problems caused by wild boars. Because their ability to invade is proportional to their ability to reproduce and adapt to the environment. Wild boars are an invasive species, so they have no real natural predators to speak of. This means there is no natural mechanism to control their numbers. Worse still, a female pig can give birth to two litters of five to eight cubs each, which further complicates the population problem. Births can occur every month of the year, with most wild boar populations having peak births occurring in the winter and spring months, in areas where forage is abundant, such as croplands or where provision of supplemental food for wildlife is common, reproductive rates may be higher than average. Their ability to adapt to the environment is extremely good. During dry years, wild boars expand their home range in search of food and water. In years with above average rainfall, wild boars grow larger and have higher survival rates of their young. Roots, vegetables, worms, and insects. They eat everything they can fit in their mouths. When conditions permit, wild boars will choose agricultural crops, often accounting for more than 50% of the plant diet and causing significant damage to agricultural fields. Wild boars even eat veal, sheep, and deer when given the opportunity. Known for its gluttony, an adult wild boar will consume approximately 3% of its body weight per day and consume it within 4 to 6 hours. Pigs' rapid digestion shows their tremendous appetite. That's why wild boars can turn your farm into ruin. These farmers are building fences around their farm areas. They will prioritize materials and designs that not only protect stray animals, but also deter invasive species. As you can see, wild boars are strong enough to overturn many types of fences and rush into farms even during the day. Therefore, farmers need to build a solid protection system. Excluding feral pigs with fencing is a safe option for small-scale farms, although it can be expensive. However, if implemented on a larger scale, it will not be very effective. In addition to fences, traps are a common and effective method of eliminating feral pigs. 
a wire gate system is used to allow wild boar entry, but prevent them from escaping the trap. The large trap is made of sturdy metal. Farmers will spread corn as bait to attract them. The goal is to get the whole herd of pigs at once. At night, wild boar's eyesight is quite poor and everything will be easier. You can see a lot of wild boars caught in traps. After being captured, the next morning, farmers will come and shoot the wild boars and let them decompose on their own or collect them on the truck to be processed. Traps help them save time and still be able to take down a series of invaders like this. Texas documents show the effort has cost about $3 million of the budget each year. As rice and soybean fields begin to mature, they will become a favorite target for wild boars. Wild boars are not often active during the day and a farmer works all day. But you know, farmers will have to protect their land. He would have to go out at night and do something. Hour-long stalking sessions like this take place to protect their fields. The more often hunting will take place, the more likely the area in the vicinity of the farm will limit the presence of wild boars. At the same time, it inhibits their rapid reproduction rate. After setting the time, this machine will shoot corn out to attract nearby pigs. At this time, hunters can easily aim and kill them from far away corners. Along the fields of Texas, you will see this image appear often. You may find this pursuit quite brutal. However, it is the final result of devastation that causes heavy damage to the economy and people's lives. These shots were fired in the hope of reducing the number of wild boars in the area. Hunting pressure will cause wild boars to relocate from their habitats, or at least limit their movements. Hunting with guns is the most popular method, but it is not very effective. Broken Arrow Ranch in Texas works with trappers to capture and deliver feral hogs to slaughterhouses for meat processing and packaging. They sell 1,500 to 1,700 wild boars every year. They prefer to buy medium-sized pigs, weighing between 80 and 180 pounds. Because the larger the wild boar gets, the more hormones it secretes, making the meat smell unpleasant. All pigs entering the food system are subject to federally mandated inspection under FSIS, whether they are farm-raised or wild-caught. There are currently 15 federally inspected facilities that specialize in feral hog slaughter scattered across the United States. Some Texas chefs, farmers and meat suppliers have introduced wild boar into the food chain. They are turning this invasive animal into a sustainable source of protein for humans. At a restaurant in Austin, Texas, wild boar is a prominent dish on the menu. However, eating wild boar meat can pose many health risks, so it is not popular. This may be a negative sign for the wild boar meat production industry, but it is not necessarily a bad result. Because when the demand for wild boar meat increases, the invasion of this species will explode strongly. At this time, Texas farmers' battle with wild boars will become increasingly difficult. Hello my friends. Invasive animals have always been a problem for the government and farmers in the United States. In addition to common invasive species such as wild boar, white-tailed deer and coyotes, agriculture and the natural landscape in the United States is also affected by a multitude of other invasive species such as swamp rats, Canadian geese, beaver, raccoons, wild turkeys and wild horse. To limit the negative effects of invasive species, 
the US government often encourages affected people to use measures such as habitat destruction, trapping, or hunting these invasive species to the extent permitted. These are Canadian geese, one of the most common wild geese in the United States and North America. It is estimated that there are at least 7.3 million Canadian geese living in the United States today. And they are wild animals that cause quite a bit of trouble for farmers and the US government. In the beginning of March to the end of May every year is usually the time when Canadian geese nest and lay eggs. The nests are often made right next to water bodies such as lakes or swamps. On average, each female Canadian goose usually lays about five eggs and the eggs will then be incubated for about 25 to 32 days depending on weather conditions. For Canadian geese, incubation will be done by both male and females. Immediately after hatching, these geese are able to forage on their own, and their diet is similar to that of adult geese. In recent years, California, Oregon and Minnesota are the states that regularly record large numbers of Canadian geese coming in to nest and breed. The stems and shoots of the grass are the favourite food of Canadian geese. Therefore, it is very common to see flocks of Canadian geese roaming the grasslands in the United States. The fact that dozens or even hundreds of Canadian geese feed on the grasslands is also one of the problems that concerns many people because they leave while feeding is quite dirty. Young Canadian geese will live with their parents for about a year before becoming independent and they will need to about three months to learn to fly and be ready to migrate with the flock. In the wild, baby geese are the preferred prey of carnivores such as foxes, coyotes and crows. Currently, due to rapid urbanization in the United States, spacious manicured grasslands and artificial ponds are often the favorite place of the geese. The fact that dozens or even hundreds of geese live right next to human habitation has caused many problems, and this is why they are considered one of the invasive species of the United States. Geese are prolific and indiscriminate poopers. These geese will poop once every 20 minutes, and on an average day, each adult goose will poop up to one and a half pounds of poop. Having a flock of a few dozen Canadian geese living in a park would cause much of the park's grasslands to be destroyed. In addition, their droppings will make lakes and grasslands quite polluted. This not only causes problems in artificial grasslands and lakes, but flocks of Canadian geese can also be dangerous for flights. It is estimated that every year around the world, there are about 1,200 plane crashes involving geese. At several golf courses in the United States, workers employ drones to scare away the geese before the matches are played.
When it comes to the problems of Canadian geese, we cannot ignore the noise pollution that this animal causes. During the breeding season, the geese will fight with each other for the right to mate. And this is the time when they honk continuously. If you are unfamiliar with these sounds, chances are you will get annoyed and want to do something about these geese. Every September and October, thousands of Canadian geese fly south to avoid the cold. During the migration, the geese may stop at grass fields to replenish their energy before continuing to fly. This is also a big problem for grain farmers because thousands of geese can cause significant damage to their crops. Currently, there are many solutions to deal with Canadian geese in the United States. In particular, they allow hunters to kill geese as a solution that has received a lot of agreement from people who are not sympathetic to this animal. Catching and butchering the geese is a short-term solution that is implemented. Late June and early July is usually the time when Canadian geese molt. This is also the time when they cannot fly. Therefore, it is very easy to gather and catch them at this moment. Many charities do this in the United States and the goose meat is then distributed to needy families. Next, we will go to the US state of Louisiana to see how dealing with thousands of swamp rats works. The swamp rat, also known as the Nutria, is a large 20 pound rodent that lives in the coastal marshes of Louisiana and is now a widespread throughout the southern United States. Swamp rats are considered an invasive species because they often eat the roots of plants in the swamp to the point where they don't have a chance to regrow. They can feed on large swaths of marsh overnight, leaving empty water in their path. According to the United States Wildlife Service, an adult swamp rat can give birth to 40 to 60 young per year. This makes the population of this animal always a threat to the ecology of the wetlands. Currently, many parks in Louisiana have an abundance of swamp rats and the visitors often have a habit of providing food for them. However, as recommended by animal experts, the act of providing food for swamp rats can cause their numbers to increase rapidly and this will harm the landscape of the park. To deal with this invasive species, trapping and hunting are the two frequently used solutions. To encourage people to exterminate swamp rats, the Louisiana government agreed to a $6 reward for each swamp rat killed. 